Hey folks, Jay here for the J Spot at Toronto Pearson International Airport. Beautiful spring day, nice and warm. Today I thought we'd talk about the history of aircraft or airplane engines. Specifically how they've evolved over a period of time. The first category is piston engined aircraft, gas piston engines. The very first plane that flew the Wright Flyer, that flew in 1903, was a gas piston engine. The engine was very similar to what you'd see in an automobile. And uh, basically the piston moves up and down inside the cylinder, compresses the air, is mixed with fuel, vapor, and then ignited. And the piston is pushed down, that's connected to a crankshaft. That crankshaft connected to a propeller. In the case of the Wright Brothers plane, it was connected to a gear. And there were chains. They were bicycle mechanics, after all. And that was used to drive two propellers. They had to build their own engine because of the fact that the automobile engines of the day were too heavy. So they built their own engine. They machined out the metal to get as much metal removed and weight as they could without it exploding when they fired it up. And that's been the history of engineering in aviation, the fact that you get as much least amount of weight that you can and the aerodynamics of the aircraft as precise as you can and you get the best flying airplane. So that was the first type of airplane engine that you saw, a piston engine. Eventually, the piston engine aircraft reached its limit, its ability to lift any weight or go any speed. And so solutions had to be found. So the first solution to that, other than multi-engined airplanes, was to have multi-cylinders. And the first type of multi-cylinder aircraft engine was called a rotary piston engine, where there were six or eight pistons in cylinders and they spun with the uh, turbo shaft, with the crankshaft, and that was attached to the propeller. That was the simplest way that this was done. That gave you more power. And each time you see these changes, understand that you, the amount of power that you produce is a magnitude at least ahead of it. This was some ten times more powerful than the Wright Brothers engine. So that was the second iteration of a uh, piston engined aircraft. From there you went to a radial piston engine where the engine cylinders were much larger but they were fixed and then the crankshaft turned the propeller. And from there you went to multi-engined aircraft and some of the largest of these types of engines were those used on the Lockheed Constellation with the four engines. A magnificent looking plane. And that basically was about the limit that you could find for that type of engine. Near the end of the Second World War, a new type of engine was developed, a gas turbine engine. If you think of the cylinders of a piston engine with the cylinders going vertically, you can think of a turbine as a horizontal thrust. When the last versions of radial piston engines were developed, they had huge superchargers to force air into the engine. And the idea with the turboprop was you'd take a gas turbine engine and instead of shooting a jet out the back, you'd use that power to run a propeller at the front. 
because of the nature of the gas turbine where it compressed the air itself without the need of a, a supercharger, mixed the fuel and air together, ignited it, produced power that ran the turbo, uh, the propeller, you had a situation where you had a much more powerful engine. And it also ran on the cheaper Jet A type fuel, which was cheaper to produce. So the first use of a gas turbine was in a turboprop engine like this Dash 8 that's coming in. It has two turboprops. You can hear the whir of the propeller and the whine of the turbine. And so our second category, number two, is the turbojet engine. Basically a gas turbine with the jet shooting out the back, air sucked in, the front compressed mixed with gas shoots a jet out the back. You can think of it like a propeller engine inside a tube and that propeller is now a, a fan and that compresses the air then you mix it with fuel. The jet coming out the back at very high speed meant that the jet aircraft could travel much quicker than even turboprop airliners. Now the first use of these types of engines was at the end of World War II and there was little interest initially from airlines to use these types of engines because it was new technology, it was an unknown thing. In 19, late 1940s when the Comet, the uh, Hawker Siddeley Comet was built, they discovered a whole new series of problems with the aircraft itself because of metal fatigue caused by pressurizing and depressurizing the hull of the aircraft. And so initially, airlines weren't all that keen on the turbojet aircraft because it was so new. And there were already these huge plants in place producing radial piston engines. But eventually, like this 787, turbine jet engines came into their own. Now if you ask the average person why did jet engines become popular, they'd probably say, well, it caused the airplane to go quicker, two to three times faster than a, even a, a turboprop or radial piston engine with a propeller. But that's not the real reason. Remember, airlines are companies, so they have to look at the bottom line. And one of the main reasons, and there's two of them, that the airlines took to jet engines, first of all, was the cost of fuel. The uh, aviation jet fuel was less expensive than avgas used in the radial piston engines at the time. But the main thing is T B. O. TBO stands for time between overhauls. It was discovered that jet engines had tremendously long time between overhauls. You could run them for much greater number of hours before you had to rebuild them or, or overhaul them. And that was the key, eventually the key selling point. And you started to see airplanes uh, like the Boeing 707, the, the uh, Douglas DC-8 being used and then of course the uh, later jets that came. But that was the reason, time between overhauls, that's the initial reason why airlines took to jetliners, not because they were faster. Interesting fact. And then we have turbofan engines, like this one. A330 with two turbofan engines. Eventually what was realized was jet engines, one of the problems with them, although they were fast and, and uh, they were reliable, one of the problems with them was that they were loud and one of the problems was that the speed at which the jet came out the back 
was much faster than the airplane itself was traveling. And that meant that they weren't as fuel efficient. So someone realized if you could use some of the power in a jet turbine to turn a large propeller or fan at the front and produce most of your thrust through that, you'd have a much more reliable, fuel efficient engine. And that's how the turbofan engine was produced. It was a turbojet, but some of the power that was produced by the turbine was used to run this huge fan at the front. And there were still were compressor stages and areas where the fuel was burned, but most of the thrust came from this cool air traveling over the hot turbine engine. And that's how the turbofan engine was produced. And eventually you had I bypass turbofan, the first iteration of which was seen in the Lockheed C-5A Galaxy, huge transport plane. And of course the Boeing 747. I can remember coming here as a kid and being able to hear the sound of the 747's engine, the typical whine of a turbofan, and tell it was a 747. The difference was that you got a tremendous amount of thrust from the engine. The speed at which the gas was coming out of the back of the engine was closer to the speed of the airplane, and hence the plane was more efficient. Airplane engine engineers have constantly dealt with the fact that they have this super fast air coming into the inlet of an engine, sometimes at supersonic speed, and that's always been a problem for them, still is today. But the high bypass turbofan allowed them to produce a tremendous amount of thrust with the equivalent speed of a jet and be able to take much higher loads. That's why you see today more two-engined aircraft than you do four-engined aircraft. Because the two-engined aircraft engines, they're just so powerful, so powerful. We saw earlier we saw earlier the Boeing 777 come in. And one of those engines can produce upwards of 110,000 pounds of thrust. That's more thrust than all eight of the engines in the original Boeing B-52 turbojets. Think about that. So now you see more aircraft with two engines than you do with four. And the simple reason is economy. If you have 100 aircraft with four engines, that's 400 engines. And if you have two engines, you have 200. Simple economy. And of course, they're quite expensive, the engines themselves. Plus, you have to maintain them. Regardless of their cost, you have to maintain them. So the, hope they, hopefully that uh, is a little bit of information for you about the history and the top five airplane engines throughout history. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I, I need one of them Lord of the Rings eagles. Yeah. No, at low altitude. It would probably keep them below 5,000. No, feet. <laughs>